Rise of boy um they're having the times of their lives like 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 you know where we hanging out and what we doing um we, we can't really disclose listen 14 years old that's creepy bro that's a bit weird it's not like for for men it's not as weird as it would have been if he had a 14 year old girl there then bro then they'll cook him directly then it's like okay because he could be teaching him something but in it's also the music industry so maybe they're doing music ah it's a, it's a bit cringe it's a bit cringe it's a bit cringe but um it's definitely a 15 year old's dream oh my um, you know, I, it's not it's it wasn't my dream when i was 15 i wasn't thinking like oh my god i want to hang out with diddy you know maybe maybe bow wow because we're almost not nah, okay bow was way older than me but bow wow i used to see him when i was like 15 he was super big making music he was with cassie and i was like god man i, I wish i was bow wow with everything that's coming out about Diddy and the allegations and also this new Menendez Brothers show called Monsters, if you think we need to have a conversation about male sexual assault. The reasons that Diddy was able to hide in plain sight for so long is because so many of his victims were male and because our culture views male sexual assault as extremely emasculating. I just watched a video of one of the Menendez brothers being asked if they are gay. And yes, that was many decades ago, but one of them is being asked if he's gay because of what his father did to him because he was a victim of sexual assault. It's really, really scary. Um, a lot of the men who were on the jury, a lot of like homophobia ingrained in it and they was happened to this boy, then he probably like wanted it, which is scary cycle if you look at r kelly or juno diaz if you are a reader or you know he's a famous writer and these are victims in childhood of sexual assault who then later went on to have horrible horrible behaviors and become the perpetrators because they could not talk about their experience or process it healthily they end up hurting people this whole p diddy situation i think is very interesting i look at p diddy as a victim just like justin bieber the reason why is just because we're not asking the question why is p diddy the way that he is and i know that's a hard question to ask right now when he's accused of all of these things but i think it's a very important question to ask because when i look at justin bieber i think that is a victim he went through something and it has opened my eyes to how people don't really care about man's struggle and i don't really care about it as well because i've made i don't know how many jokes i've made about men getting in jail and me laughing about it but when i look at justin bieber i do feel some sympathy for him because i can see something happened to him he really went through something so i'm like he was by p diddy now we do not know that we can't confirm or deny but allegedly if he was then what happened to p diddy when he was a young child because usually it's hurt people hurt people that's how the story goes america loves putting black men in jail even the famous ones so for diddy's indictment to take so long and for his enterprise to be protected it begs the question are there white millionaires puppeteering him who are really running this show and are the mastermind behind this. Clive Davis is a record producer who put Diddy on, taught him everything he knows, and there's rumors that they were in a relationship together. There is a tape of Clive Davis talking about how he's attracted to men. We know that Diddy has allegations of grooming and making famous men his boy toys. You would assume he learned that from somewhere. I think a lot of parallels can be drawn from the slave master buck breaking a slave trying to dehumanize them and emasculate them and then how black masculinity can sometimes turn around and do the same thing to women i think that there's some pair and even deeper because diddy obviously has a lot of allegations of abuse towards all genders it does appear that he was brought up in an environment that catered to that so again i am wondering not just what clive davis davis taught him like in the the freak offs and the partying and the interpersonal relationships, but financially, because Clive Davis, I think, is also a lawyer, what he may have 
strung duty up in financially like imagine who this man's friends are that maybe he is tied duty to in a way that he can't escape do you know what i'm saying like i don't think this man would ever let this man go no strings attached and it's very possible that these like rich millionaire billionaire white men epstein level men have been able to use diddy as like some sort of mask for their enterprise obviously diddy is guilty i'm just saying i am imagining that there's a lot of rich white men who are being more covered in what's happening right now they're still in the shadows but they very much could be guilty as well like i just think there's prop this guy is not in jail right now justin bieber i have no knowledge they're not alleging his name in any of this but justin bieber was very young when he came into diddy's circle and that tape you referenced of the two of them about to spend 48 mm -hmm. hours together or having just was disturbing and there's no question he had a lot of exposure to this guy and i think he should say something but now if he's a victim if he's a victim he's in a very difficult spot because he's been abused if diddy were to call me when i was like what 15 and it's like hey you want to hang out i'll be like eh, i don't know if i want to hang i like i have nothing in common with you we don't i don't i don't look up to you like what are we gonna what are we gonna do and even the music is not even connected like that but who knows man maybe he's trying to make a buck i have, I have been given custody of him you know he yeah. signed the usher, signed the usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of usher when when you know he, he did his first album i did his yes. first album I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, yeah, and we're going to go full. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Diddy, please. Okay, if you're, if you're a uh, deviant, do not, don't film yourself. If you, if you have something weird, some weird shit that you do, don't film yourself. Bruh, Diddy, you can't, you can't be both a star and you, that doesn't work. Buck full crazy. You're going crazy. Crazy. I'm taking this out tonight. What you want to do? What you want to do over the next 48 hours? Oof, that's weird. 14 years old. Justin Bieber's just 14 years old. And where's the parents? And to be clear, I'm not making an excuse for these people. I'm just saying there are ways that we could stop this cycle from happening. I've seen it in my own life with men I've known who have really unhealthy sexual tendencies and behaviors. And they're like, oh, that's just how guys are. Like, we just naturally, you know, we have these like weird sexual inclinations that women don't, which is such an excuse. And, and then it comes out that they have experienced sexual assault, um, coping with it by, you know, developing these unhealthy sexual behaviors. Raising a son, you know? And I'm thinking about if something was to ever happen to him and that he wouldn't tell anybody because of the shame and the taboo surrounding it and to like protect this idea of masculinity and his identity and then hurt others. It's just like, it's so sad. It's awful. Starting to act different, huh? You, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't... I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got my number, so. Right. Okay. My number? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Tell you my number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <sighs> Something that I do not understand is P Diddy's corporations were huge. He knew everybody in the industry, right? He P Diddy is a billionaire, or he was a billionaire before. I guess they stole his billionaire status, like the same thing that they did to Kanye West. But at all of these parties with all of these people, people went to these parties and no one saw anything. The Aston Kutchers, the Kim Kardashians, there's so many people at these parties. Now, what I think happened is all of these people are working together and they have blackmail on each other. And that is why they're throwing P. Diddy under the bus because they're all in cahoots. This is a celebrity a celebrity which always like has the camera on him day in day out you're telling me that no one saw anything no one saw what happened to cassie no one saw anything they got it on tape doesn't that raise some questions who's involved what is kanye talking about what is dave Chappelle talking about 
How do these people make that much money? There are all these questions which aren't really answered. And now we're just sitting here and we're crucifying one person, that's P. Diddy. And imagine P. Diddy, Oprah, Justin Timberlake, Justin Bieber, Jamie Foxx, Kanye West, Jay-Z, Beyonce, all of these people were there. And even people which are just like at the party, they get to see crazy things as well. So if they allowed him to do that, and now they're throwing him under the bus, I think the best thing that P. Diddy can do right now to protect himself is just start to snitch. Tell us who was there, who did what? Because if you compare P. Diddy to Epstein, Epstein did the exact same thing, but no lists were released. Where's Kevin Hart? Guys, I'm trying to figure it out. Where's Kevin Hart? The world's funniest man. He always has a joke. Where's Kevin Hart and why is he so quiet? And why was he on those tapes? I was watching a video on YouTube where Kevin Hart was at the P. Diddy party with Usher, making jokes, having a good time. Usher, Usher looked like he fresh, fresh off the goddamn, goddamn plane. Usher, 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 fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes. So we, go, we coming to you live, um, Diddy Late Nights, um, when anything can happen, I'm just vibing, it's so wild, so wild. You gotta keep, you gotta keep that. Meet Sean Freak Off Combs. Why'd you just call him Freak Offs? Because his events were called Freak Offs. Lock in. See, Diddy had a problem. He just got arrested for three things, and they all have to do with his events. The Freak Offs. One, something called racketeering, meaning he used his business to do criminal things. Two, transporting professional Netflix watchers across state lines. And three, forcing people to watch Netflix with him and other people. Now, a district attorney of New York comes out and says, oh, and by the way, we have evidence. Did he said, evidence? He looked at his lawyer, he said, how much they got? His lawyer said, well, prisoner 11227 is looking like, Diddy said, prisoner, my name is Diddy. His lawyer said, not for long. The district attorney said, can I finish? Uh, so yeah, we went into his house and we got all the videotapes of his freak off. Yeah, so it turns out Diddy filmed his freak offs and it turns out he also did this to blackmail people and this goes along with his charges. If they didn't watch Netflix with him continuously, he would say, I'm gonna show this videotape. But here's where it starts to get wicked. He couldn't do this alone. So the district attorney also says they're looking at a bunch of other people for charges. They named his security, his assistants. They said it was a whole group of people helping him out. In fact, they found 1,000 bottles of baby oil in his house. I went to go meet him down there one day so we could bust a move. This is when he just signed with Bad Boy. He didn't even have an album out yet. He was just getting signed. And I went to use a bathroom and it was a dildo. Um, on the bathroom sink. Right now, if Will Smith and P. Diddy were to come out and just say like, hey, I like, I like, you know, goggling, you know, I like getting pounded from behind. I like the, the booty blaster 3000, you know, it's not such a big thing, but it's the fact that you guys are hiding it and you're like making up things and I'm going to, the lawsuit is coming, bro. We, Will, we know you ain't, you ain't coming with no lawsuit. Like you had to address every single thing. You had to apologize about every single thing, right? But now a person is attacking your manhood and you have nothing to say about that. You know what I'm saying? Before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early with me. And now he's one of the richest stars in the world. And I'm Yo, like, what the f***? Puff just said. So early in the show, we talked about the fact that uh, Cassie filed a lawsuit in New York against Diddy yesterday, claiming okay. she was stuck in a decade-long cycle of abuse, violence, and sacking. If you missed it, here's what you missed. Also tonight, music mogul Sean Diddy Combs accused of sacking and sexual assault in a lawsuit filed in federal court here in New York. Chloe Malas is here. Chloe, what more do we know about this? Uh, Lester, the lawsuit filed by Cassandra Ventura, known by her stage name Cassie, met Holmes when she was 19 years old. She was. Ah, Diddy, you have some explaining to do.
a 19 year old girl i don't know this is oh it was later signed to combs's record label and the pair had been romantically involved ventura alleges that combs not only raped her but over the course of a decade physically abused her, as well as, quote, lured her into a drug-fueled lifestyle. Ventura says that after years in silence and darkness, she's finally ready to tell her story. Now, Combs's lawyer said in a statement in part that his client vehemently denies the allegations, calling them Bro. baseless. I'm going to tell you one thing. This is the this exact reason why Me Too should exist. I'm not a P. Diddy fan. I know nothing about him. I've heard a lot of speculations around that man of the things that he does. Uh, but this is this is a good reason why the Me Too movement should exist. And if this guy is guilty, get him out of here. Nicki Minaj is calling out Jay-Z for being involved in the freak offs with Diddy. Nicki Minaj is on Twitter going off on Jay-Z and all his little minions saying they all have been quiet about everything that they've known for years about Diddy. This all started because Nicki Minaj said she received a call that Jay-Z sold his company called Tidal and they offered her a million dollars, but she had 24 hours to sign the agreement or it was off the table. And Nicki Minaj is claiming that this million dollar offer is to keep her silent and it's basically hush money. And this reminded me of when Diddy said that he was going to give his publishing back to all of his artists and then Aubrey O'Day read an NDA that came with the publishing rights and you had to say that you would never talk about Diddy or anybody that he was ever affiliated with if you signed that deal to get back your publishing rights. And this is where it gets good because she starts calling out Steve Stout, Jay-Z, and other people saying, we want to know if you were present during the abuse of these minors. She said, we want to know about Aaliyah, Foxy Brown, etc. during those our Kelly videos and shoots and stuff. Did you know about the abuse of Kim Porter and Cassie? Y'all seem to always run in a sort of rat pack. So that's what we the people want to know about you and your people to speak on. Somebody tweeted out, they wanted brunch and baby oil. And then she said, worried about the tea of a 15 year old child who is railroaded, but no comments of the tea and the baby oil that's been going on for decades, as recent as months ago. If 15 year olds need to be held accountable and told they can never move past their past, then what happened to the 30 year olds who groomed and groomed and sat by and was silent? Then she said, undercover men are always aggravated with women because they have decided that they can't live their their truth. Therefore, women who have done nothing wrong to them are made to pay for simply existing. Fix it, Jesus. Enough is enough. And then she shared this post saying move that says Nicki Minaj has now surpassed Jay-Z to become the sixth longest charting rapper of all time on Billboard. Ooh boy, this shit is getting juicy. Jay-Z is getting called out and we knew it was going to happen. I feel like all of Hollywood is about to crumble with all of this stuff about Diddy. We are going to learn the truth about every single person that was involved. In a recent interview, Gina, the girlfriend of Diddy, has made shocking allegations against him. Do whatever the fuck I want to do. Gina courageously came forward to share her experiences, claiming that she endured a tumultuous relationship marked by abusive behavior. She recounted distressing incidents of physical violence, recounting one instance where Diddy allegedly mushed her face forcefully, causing her nose to bleed. Gina further disclosed that amidst such moments, in an even more troubling revelation, Gina asserted that she was coerced by Diddy into undergoing two abortions. Diddy is maybe one of the like hip hop's biggest producers. So of course you're gonna get a crazy ego. That's all that I'm saying. I'm not behind it. I'm just saying like his ego must be crazy. With him reportedly providing her with $50,000 on each occasion. These grave allegations emerged in the wake of Cassie's announcement of her pregnancy with her new partner. As of now, Diddy has yet to address these accusations publicly, leaving a cloud of uncertainty and prompting discussions on the responsibilities of public figures in addressing such serious matters. Thank God Jennifer Lopez escaped that. Thank God. Bruh, and that's why I'm also saying like there's sexual rumors of him being a homosexual. In 2009, rapper Exhibit had a night out with Diddy that took Oof. an unexpected turn.
the rap mogul took him to a club that turned out to be a haven for the LGBT oh, leaving exhibit feeling quite bewildered. We bounced out of bro, the Look at that, bro. Look at what they're doing to the guy. Bro, so, social media is undefeated. Look at what they're doing to the guy. Sweaty with a young boy. God damn, they gotta. I don't even want to say that this guy's a hip hop legend because honestly, I don't know so much about Diddy, but your closet's gotta be clean. You gotta be clean. You gotta be super clean. Because if you're not, bro, bro, that, that, that picture is mad. That picture, right, bro, this is crazy, bro. We're doing this to my guy, Diddy, the legend, hip hop's royalty. Y'all, people are saying that P. Diddy's best friend Jay Z may be worse than him, and they may be right after the story about Rihanna and how she was discovered. Rihanna was just 15 years old when she and two friends went to audition for an American music producer named Evan Rogers, who was vacationing with his wife in Barbados. Rogers would later say that when 15 year old Robin, now Rihanna, walked in the room, the other two girls just disappeared. But she had such a presence. The capri pants she wore were perfect, her makeup was perfect, and her green eyes and that supermodel neck. Yeah, she was 15, Rogers. He then said, to himself if that girl can sing holy shit because in roger's mind at the time he said that usually it's the pretty girls that can't sing so i guess with that logic the other two minor girls didn't totally disappear but when he heard rihanna's voice he was blown away but her mother wasn't so sure rihanna's mother's main goal was for her daughter to get an education so it would only be on school holidays that evan rogers would fly rihanna to his hometown in order to record demos demos that would soon make their way into the lap of jay-z jay-z heard rihanna's ponda replay and said that she was going to be a one-hit wonder but rogers was convinced she wouldn't be you see, 15-year-old Rihanna had told Evan Rogers that she wanted nothing more than to be a singer in this life. And Rogers said he saw it in her eyes. But what was it exactly? No mere girlish desire for fame. No, it was much more urgent, like the urgent need to escape a violent household. The illusion of security and boundless love that fame would give her. He said that that desire, more than any inborn talent, was what people wanted to see. More than that, it was what men in the record companies wanted to see. I am not lying. This is what this man said. He said it is the one thing that artists cannot manufacture. If this doesn't sound totally predatory to you, I don't know what does. Especially since Rihanna did grow up in an abusive home. Her father was an alcoholic. And so to convince Jay-Z she was not just a one-hit wonder, they would fly her to New York City to meet with him in person. Once he saw her, Jay-Z was blown away by her and asked Rogers what he had to do to get them to cancel all of the rest of his meetings. Able executive who was L.A. Reid at the time, who we talked about in another video, who had previously said, up for a 13 year old usher to live with p diddy for a year yeah well he told jay-z not to allow rihanna to leave the building without signing her and so she was locked in jay-z's office until three in the morning until they had signed a six record deal with this child now they say that the lawyers duked it out but honestly what lawyers did the fenty family have at that time i think right now a lot of people just want blood they can sniff blood in the water and they just want to not ruin P. Diddy's career because I think that he signed a contract with the devil. So he has already ruined his career and this was his path all along. Whether he liked it or not, this is how it was going to end. What I'm just starting to sense is that people want to go after Jay-Z, you know, and there's already blood in the water. So they want to ruin Jay-Z's career as well. And to that, I have to say, there's no evidence of Jay-Z doing anything crazy with any of these girls. Yes, there were young women and hey, maybe tomorrow it might come out that he did do some crazy things, but let's leave that to the courts. I don't think it's healthy for us to start all of these crazy conspiracies and then just try to tear a man down just because we're that powerful on social media. I've seen a lot of like influencers right now starting to feel themselves, you know? They've been to the gym, they start to sense like, whoa, they're actually heavy and they can actually do some damage. I think social media, it should be used for something that is good. I've been watching some TikToks where I see people paying other people's debts off. That is what we should be using social media for and not something as sinister as destroying people's careers just because we don't like those people. If you look at it from this lens, Jay-Z 
whether you like him or hate him, he has created so many jobs for so many people. Even think of Rihanna's family. If it wasn't for Jay-Z, Rihanna wouldn't be in the powerful position that she is right now. So you can look at it from two perspectives at the same time. Two things can be true at the same time. Yes, they could have taken advantage of this very young girl, which was 15 years old, which I totally disagree with 100%, but then you can also look at it from another lens. If Rihanna did not sign to Jay-Z when she was 15 years old, then she would have never been where she is today and she's a billionaire she's got two kids with asap rocky so she has done pretty good for herself photos from p diddy's notorious white parties over the years are starting to resurface here's one in the year 2000 with his then girlfriend jennifer lopez and the daily mail just dropped an article that includes a video of p diddy on a balcony talking to his guests he says, quote, kids have an hour left, then this thing turns into something that when you get older, this is something y'all gonna want to come to. So let's just start to get our groove on, put the kids away, it's all good. He started throwing these parties back in 1998 and the last official party took place in Los Angeles in 2009. They were attended by a ton of A-listers, including Leonardo DiCaprio, Mariah Carey, Tommy Lee, and the Daily Mail included other photos as well that are probably too inappropriate for TikTok, so I'm not including them in this video. We all know last week P. Diddy was indicted and arrested on several federal charges, and in the indictment, it included allegations of Diddy throwing freak-off parties. Prosecutors will need solid evidence to prove to a jury that these freak-offs took place, including when they took place. So as this case unfolds, we will learn if they happened at the same time as these white parties or any party for that matter. <laughs> He's a little sus. He is a little sus. I'm, listen, Diddy, do not come for me. I love you, Diddy. Do not send your goons to me, but that shit is a little sus. A little sus, bro. He's a little cringy. He's a little cringy. Man, who's worse, R. Kelly or uh, P. Diddy?